Troy Carter, born November 14, 1972, is an American music manager and business investor who is the co-founder and CEO of the music and technology company Q&A. He is the former chairman and CEO of Atom Factory. He has a net worth of $60 million, and he's done it all without a college degree. Now, 10 things you may not know about Troy Carter. Number 10, childhood hardships. Troy was born in West Philadelphia, and by the age of two, his parents had divorced. His father remarried, but drama and trauma would soon follow. Troy's father found himself in an argument with his brother-in-law. The argument escalated and turned violent when Troy's father pulled a gun, shooting and killing his brother-in-law. Troy was only seven years old when his father was sentenced to 12 years in prison. After his release from prison, Troy would watch his father rebuild his life and he was able to separate the good from the bad of his father and has referred to him as one of his real heroes. Number 9. Getting a Foot in the Music Industry Door By 1990, Carter's focus was music over school. At 17 years old, he dropped out of West Philadelphia High School to pursue a future in music with his high school rap group, Too Too Many. A few years later, he would come to find the recording studio location of musician and actor Will Smith. For months, Troy would wait outside of the recording studio to connect with Smith and pitch him his demo. His persistence would pay off as Will Smith offered him a position as an assistant. Though it's clear that Smith saw the value in the persistence and drive in Troy Carter, Troy being the humble person that he is will recount the story saying that Will Smith took pity on him. Either way, this was the foot in the door that Troy was looking for. Number 8. From Artist to Artist Promoter Shortly after connecting with Will Smith, Troy and his rap group Too Too Many would get signed by Smith's label Will Jam, co-owned by James Lasseter. Their time on the Will Jam label was short-lived as they would be dropped after only one year. The group disbanded, but Carter would continue to be a fixture around the studio and engulf himself in the music business. He was working as an assistant to James Lasseter as well as connecting with DJ Jazzy Jeff, also becoming an assistant to Jazz. Within a year, he was promoting rap concerts around Philadelphia for artists including Biggie and Puffy. Number 7. Going, going, back, back to Philly, Philly. While promoting a concert for the notorious B.I.G., he connected with record producer Sean Puffy Combs, who offered Carter an internship at Bad Boy Records in New York City. Carter took Puffy up on his offer, but that internship would only last a year and a half. After his time with Bad Boy, he went back to work for James Lasseter, but to do so this time, he would need to go to California. His time in Cali working for James Lasseter was short-lived as he started exhibiting an attitude of entitlement and began to reject critiques regarding his work ethic. James Lasseter fired Troy and sent him back to Philly, stating that he felt Troy needed to go through some more life experience and music industry experience to come out on the other side stronger. Number 6. An Eye for Talent Troy struggled for several years to find success while back in Philadelphia, even referring to this as one of his darkest times. Then, in 1999, Carter met then-emerging rap artist Eve in Germantown, PA, and she asked him to be her manager. Carter continued to grow his management portfolio with acts like rap artist Nelly and R&B duo Floetry. Capitalizing on his eye for talent, Carter teamed up with Jay Irving, son of retired basketball player Julius Irving, and they co-founded the talent management company Irving Wonder. Number 5. Back to Broke But Ready to Rebuild In the early 2000s, things were going great for Troy Carter. He helped secure a deal for Eve to have her own sitcom on UPN. Also, he and Irving had sold Irving Wonder to a British-based firm, Sanctuary, with Carter staying on board, serving as the company's executive vice president. But by the mid-2000s, things began to crumble. Eve had fired him, the deal with Sanctuary fell apart, he was in massive amounts of debt, his car was being repossessed, and his home mortgage was being foreclosed. As Troy was facing eviction, record producer Vincent Herbert introduced Carter to an unknown artist by the name of Stephanie Germanata, better known as Lady Gaga. She was recently dropped by Def Jam Records, and Carter wisely agreed to be her manager.
Want to hear more about entrepreneurs that have succeeded without a college degree? Subscribe to our channel, where our goal is to educate, encourage, and entertain zero-degree entrepreneurs just like you. Now back to the countdown. Number four, Growing Gaga. For the next year, Troy Carter, Vincent Herbert, and Lady Gaga traveled around California on a tight budget, strategically having Gaga perform at nightclubs versus small theaters. We have the ability to go and play theaters right now, but you know what, let's go and play nightclubs because you know we really can kind of have her develop her live act there and we can really build a, an audience. Troy felt this was the best way for Gaga to develop her live act and grow a dedicated audience. He stresses the importance of an artist's discovery process for the fan and making sure the audience feels they have an ownership in the artist. Quote, the worst thing for us to have is somebody discover one of our acts on the top 40 radio because people won't feel they have ownership in it. Radio stations that were initially refusing to play Gaga's song, Just Dance, now were being pushed by leagues of Gaga's little monsters, successfully getting Just Dance on the radio and taking her career to the next level. Since signing Lady Gaga in 2007, Carter has gone on to manage other amazing artists such as John Legend, Lindsey Sterling, and Megan Trainer. It was also in 2007 that Carter founded Coalition Media Group and its management division, Atom Factory, a few years later in 2010. Number three, a barbecue to ignite the tech investor. In 2010, Carter would attend a barbecue at the home of investor Joe Lonsdale. After hearing conversations about ride-sharing business models and mobile phone apps from some of the biggest investors in Silicon Valley, Carter needed to get involved. He saw that there was a technological power shift happening and he would ensure he would end up on the winning side. One way he would get involved in the tech world was a seemingly natural pairing when Carter joined the Spotify team where he would spend a few years as their head of creator services. Really big managers to be and, and who have really big clients and tell them what the downside was to for them leaving their product off of Spotify. Number two, driven back to success. Troy Carter has made some amazing investment decisions by backing companies like file sharing company Dropbox and eyeglasses upstart Werby Parker. Carter also invested in both Uber and Lyft, making him the only investor to invest in both ride sharing companies. Troy co-founded venture capital firm Cross Culture Ventures and has backed more than 80 tech startups. He has also appeared as a guest shark during the seventh season of the business investment TV series Shark Tank. And Carter was also named to Oprah Winfrey's Super Soul 100 list of visionaries and influential leaders in 2016. Nine down, one to go. Which were the most surprising to you? Are there any interesting things that we missed? Comment down below. Number one. West Philly Spidey Sense for Investing Carter's strategy for investing involves learning from his mistakes and developing an internal compass for what works and what doesn't, allowing him to get more right than he gets wrong. He says he has a good feel for people and a great BS detector. He calls this his West Philly Spidey Sense. I have a really good feel for people mm -hmm. and um, a really good bullshit detector is like a, my West Philly Spidey senses. <laughs> Being involved in the music industry, specifically hip hop, he developed the ability to read rooms and finesse things. So the mindset for the process of sitting in rooms when people are pitching him business ideas comes naturally. He asks very basic questions and invests through the lens of a consumer. Carter has been quoted as saying, the only two things that have ever come naturally to me are music and investing. This has been 10 things you may not know about Troy Carter. If you would like to suggest a zero degree entrepreneur for a future episode, or you yourself are a zero degree entrepreneur and you would like to share your story, please go to zerodegreeentrepreneur.com.